Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Gamer Tidicom video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the release date for the Intel 8 core Cofidic processors, and also an update concerning their HEDT lineup, including the release of a 22 core processor. And then we're going to move over to the Xbox 2. That's right, the next generation Xbox. There have been a slew of rumors concerning this recently, including yet an entire family name and release date for the supposed devices. But with that said, we're going to start things out once again with Intel and 8 core Coffee Lake and the 22 core HEDT processor. So while much of the news with Combitex and Intel was, of course, around the 28 core 5 gigahertz demo, <laughs> There was one thing that was a bit conspicuous with his absence, the Z390 chipset. It was a bit weird recently, about three weeks ago, Intel themselves released the information concerning this, and then since then there's been no press statements, press have not got any review samples, there's not been any details that's been released, there's been no statements, it's just been really quiet. But according to suppliers, that is still not necessarily a bad thing. According to um, according to motherboard manufacturers, we're going to see the Z390, however, launch in August and September. And crucially, the 8-core Coffee Lakes are going to launch along with it. Of course, 8-core Coffee Lake has one purpose, and that is pretty obvious, to compete against the 2700X. One of the things that we had maybe thought AMD were going to announce at the Computex event was the creation of the 2800X. AMD had mentioned that it's a possibility they might do that, and essentially all they can really do is up the clock speeds a couple of hundred megahertz, so they might just be waiting for Intel to formally announce the 8-core Coffee Lake, and then of course they can respond with the 2800X, possibly with some price cuts, so it could be good news for everyone. Switching to Intel's HEDT strategy, we're not going to be seeing Skylake X and the X299 platform going anywhere, at least for now. According to the website PC Watch, Intel are actually planning to release a 22-core SKU. So currently, of course, the 7980XE is the highest-end processor Intel put out for the X299 platform. It is 18 cores, 36 threads, but Intel don't want to be competing against Threadripper, which of course has 32 cores, uh, 64 threads with only 18 cores and, well, 36 threads. So what it can do is release this processor, which we don't know the name of as yet, in an effort to at least stave off the competition to a degree. Of course, it can't necessarily beat Intel, uh, sorry, Intel can't necessarily beat AMD on the core count, but what it can do is put out a processor which perhaps is at the more mid 4 gigahertz range. Whether that actually happens or not is a bit unknown yet, and whether we're going to have to see a BIOS flash, which presumably we will do, and how all of that's going to come together is still a bit ambiguous. I do admit that Intel are definitely a core count advantage, but some tasks, they don't necessarily scale super well on lots of cores, and there is one, one reason AMD may be at a slight disadvantage other than the clock speed, and that is, from what we've heard, and AMD themselves have confirmed this, the Threadripper 2 processors don't have the number of uh, memory channels as EPIC. So what has to happen, of course, is that each, um, each of the various dies, the four dies, only two of them are directly connected to memory controllers, therefore the other two dies have to access memory through the other two dies, if that makes sense. So in other words, dies A and B will give memory access to cores uh, C and D. Hopefully that makes sense. And in theory, that could increase latency and possibly impact applications which really hammer memory bandwidth. From what AMD have told us, well, that's only going to be a case in certain benchmarks in which, or certain tests, or certain applications. So it's probably not going to affect gaming. But perhaps if you do a lot of virtual machine work, perhaps if you do a lot of uh, 3D modeling and really push the core count, really push the memory subsystem, then that might be more of an impact. So that combined with the fact that Intel do have a clock speed advantage, possibly Intel may be able to compete in those applications. Of course, the problem here is Intel's probably going to be considerably more expensive. So there is that to take into consideration. But hey, it's something, right? So the next generation Xbox. 
We've discussed at length the fact that there are definitely multiple Xbox SKUs for the next generation. This is not new. Phil Spencer himself has confirmed this. He confirmed this at E3 and at subsequent interviews. However, release dates and information regarding the technical specifications of those Xboxes is somewhat unknown. According to the website forret.com, however, we have at least a little information concerning this. According to the website, we're gonna see a family, a hardware family, and supposedly this next generation Xbox family is known as Scarlet. So you heard it here, Xbox Scarlet. Of course, that's not necessarily going to be the front name, but it is the family, just like the Xbox One X, oh, sorry, the Xbox One, it was codenamed Durango. And then of course we saw the Xbox One X codenamed Scorpion. So there's a code name, of course, which is internal. As for the release date, it's probably going to be 2020, which makes sense. If it was 2019, people would be somewhat perturbed, upset, angry that it was so close to the Xbox One X's release. So 2020 does make sense in terms of like a three year cycle. Okay, you're not gonna be too upset. You just bought an Xbox One X on launch. Three years later, Microsoft come out with a new hardware. However, this is actually linked with another video I did today. Supposedly the PlayStation 4, could, sorry, PlayStation 5, excuse me, could come out a little earlier. The Navi GPU, which AMD have created, uh, supposedly was specifically for the PS5, although we'll see a desktop release. So whether we're gonna see it in the next generation Xbox is a bit ambiguous. I'm gonna put out a video specifically on the specifications of the next generation systems in the not too distant future. But do know that Microsoft still have a lot of options. And they could go with a Vega derivative. They could go with the next generation GPU. Navi, by the way, is for the PS5 but uh, AMD do have a next generation GPU, which supposedly is going to be a year or so after Navi. But all of this is kind of up in their air and the specifications of the next Xbox are not known. And don't forget there are multiple Xbox SKUs for the next generation for Scarlet. I have hypothesized and it's completely possible I'm wrong. I'm not saying this with any you know, rose tinted glasses. My theory, however, is that we're gonna see an Xbox traditional console and possibly either just a pure streaming device for your home or a mobile kind of switch hybrid type of device. That makes an awful lot of sense to me. Microsoft have been pushing Surface a lot. They've been pushing the idea of streaming console quality graphics, whatever that means for the next generation to the to, um, various handheld devices, including Android. So for Microsoft to have a ecosystem that they can control on a Switch-like device with like a reasonably sized screen, say five, six, seven inches, with a Xbox familiar controller, and once again, an ecosystem and an interface which users are familiar with, it just makes sense to everyone, well, everyone at Microsoft, and for those invested in cloud gaming and you know everything else as well. Imagine, this is just, once again, a speculation on my part, but imagine that you had Xbox Pass, Xbox Games Library, and Xbox Streaming, it was possibly all rolled into one with some Xbox uh, Live Gold, and they might consolidate those services, or possibly it could be additional costs, each one could cost, let's say, five or $10, whatever, extra a month, and then you could be involved in Microsoft's ecosystem. <laughs> they would basically own your gaming soul. I don't mean that in a bad way, but imagine you can have physical discs or you can download games on your next generation Xbox, or conversely, you can stream titles to your next uh, portable system. Just for the sake of argument, let's say that you were to buy Halo 6. So you could have a physical addition to that. You could put it in your console. It could be like, oh, you know what? He owns this game or she owns this game. So I'm gonna grant access to that in the library. They've got the license. I'm gonna let them stream this game either from their home system to the handheld over, a, let's say, a network, or they could just stream it directly from the Microsoft Cloud. It's a cool possibility, and it could be very similar to the idea that they originally had for the Xbox One, but just tweaked and altered for a multiple device, multiple user system. These are all speculation on my part. I'm not saying that this is fact, but it's not a leap and a jump from what Phil Spencer himself has said. 
and it makes sense to me for the next generation. And if Microsoft can do that, that's absolutely fantastic. And frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if Sony do similar. I don't think we're at the point yet where game streaming is anywhere close to being normal. I think too many people are involved in the idea of a physical disc or a physical copy of the game that they own. But this idea to me is absolutely amazing. <laughs> or a derivative thereof. I mean, these guys are obviously, there's a reason they work at Microsoft, there's a reason they work at Sony, there's a reason they work at Nintendo. This is what they're thinking in day out, day in, day out. So I'm sure that if they could do something like this, and I've thought of it, and I'm sure others have thought of it, I'm sure some of you have thought of it, they are probably figured something similar as well. But that's just a theory on my part, right? Either way, the year 2020, Scarlet appears to be the family, and that's pretty awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next generation of systems. I love my Xbox One X, I love my PS4 Pro, and I love PC gaming, and I love the Nintendo Switch. But when I saw the Halo, the next generation Halo, I was like, okay, <laughs> my body is ready for the next generation, and it's going to be awesome. With all of that said, normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Uh, very quick little message before I mosey on off. A lot of you have asked if I would like to do the retro hardware. Sorry, a lot of you have. I, I asked whether I'd, whether you'd like me to do the retro hardware, and I, a lot of you have said that I, you know, it would fit well with the channel. So we're probably going to start doing that. I am at the moment finishing some reviews and some other bits and pieces. I've got like six or seven video projects I'm working on. Most of those have almost finished. It's been a bit of a nightmare recently because over the past couple of days I've had some real uh, major client work that's come in and it's slowed down production a little bit, so I can only apologize for that. It is what it is. Uh, client website was taken down. It was a thing. I had to kind of rush around over the past couple of days, so I've been a little less, you know, around. But it is what it is. Uh, real life sometimes kicks you in the, you know, things that are tender. <laughs> Good old YouTube having to censor myself. It's a friend. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm working on it. Uh, it'll be a couple of reviews over the next couple of days. I can only apologize for the delay, unfortunately, you know, real life and all. But with all of that said, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.